key thing about when you're living on Mars is you need your buildings to be completely airtight because the atmosphere outside is essentially poisonous. Um, you then need to be able to keep out all the dangerous solar and cosmic radiation. So you need to have the outside uh, made of something which will keep all those dangerous rays out. So our house partially would be built underground in the amazing lava tubes which exist under the surface of Mars. That's where the bedrooms and bathrooms would be. And then above ground would be a living room, this gold inflatable section that you see behind us and that would be filled with a homemade concrete made of the water and crusty earth that you get on planet Mars that would then go hard and protect you from the rays that exist around you and we're essentially using the inflatable structure as a formwork for our concrete enclosure. many similar kind of features because for much of the year in Antarctica it's really hard to get outside. Uh, you have to make the most of every square meter of building that you can possibly build because it's expensive to build in the Antarctic. You have to limit your water usage, you have to limit your use of fuel and you have to support the well-being of people living for sometimes three or four months in total darkness. So they're very similar features to uh, living on Mars and it's why Antarctica is often considered by the big space agencies as the best the best terrestrial analogue for space exploration. Mars is closer to home than living on the moon would be, say. We could provide uh, a lot of the home comf comforts with, with a lot of effort. Um, uh, so the, the effort in terms of the water would be melting it or purifying it. The effort in terms of providing lighting would be, OK, when there's a dust storm, we can't use solar panels, what are we going to use? Are we going to use hydrogen cells? Are we going to use nuclear power? But I, I think there's a lot of potential there to have a more human lifestyle, uh, more Earth-like lifestyle than we might imagine. hydroponics living room in the Martian house. So here we're thinking um, rather more expansively about our relationship with plants. So we're not thinking about plants just as something that we use or that we eat, but our relationship and how we live together with plants. So what I've done is I've grown um, a selection of more aromatic plants, um, which we'll make into teas and we'll also make into a dye. So in here is your bedroom, they're tiny. This is your only private space in the whole house. This is where you keep your things, you do some work, and then over here is the toilet. The toilet is flushed with grey water from the sink and there's no toilet paper on that. This is a place for people to think about future living and how the scenario of life on Mars relates to their lives on Earth. Because on Mars you'd have to live within a really small resourceful community you'd have to fix everything when it breaks you'd have to really consider every aspect of your daily life so it's a place for thinking about um, yeah about all of those questions. Yeah.